everybody. Today we're going to be looking at uh, one of the Phineas songs from his upcoming album. This one's called The 90s. And it has this really cool synth part later in the song. I wanted to show you one way to get some of the same aesthetic as what he's getting with the song. So it's like this huge synth pad, probably a combination of a few different things. Uh, seems like it's a granular type synthesizer, which Logic doesn't do as well as some of the third party synths out there but it's possible to get something similar. It's just that little staticky, bubbly part of the synth, which is really cool. And um, so I've got this project started. And with this, the main thing I wanna show you though, is one option for getting that rhythm put into it. So you can actually go through and automate. Uh, you can do this a number of different ways. I never want you to think like there's only one way of doing it. But one way that came to mind that I thought would be really cool is to trigger it off of the kick drum here. And so I've got this uh, step sequencer pattern with an 808, and I'm using this as the, the source rhythm for the synth part. So check out the original song, but in this one, um, it's gonna, it's a little different. I didn't want it to, to get too close because I, I don't want uh, the YouTube gods to say that I'm using somebody else's song. However, it's in the same vein for sure. So check this out, listen close. <laughs> So there's a few different ways with this that you could do that. Um, I could have just played the part. This is what the actual part looks like. Um, besides the bass part, this is the actual synth part. It's just two notes being held out. And so that's the entire thing. The way that we get this is by using a gate. And I have a gate on each of these. This is the gate right here. The side chain is the key. So a side chain allows us to uh, use some other signal in our project as the source. So it's looking at, in this case, the kick from the step sequencer. And every time that kick activates the gate, the gate works on the synth part. So every time the kick hits, it essentially can open up the gate for the synth to come through. And when the kick is not playing, then nothing's coming through. So think of it just like as a gate on a fence. Every time the kick hits, it's like somebody sitting there kicking the gate and they kick it open and then you can see through it and then the kick swings back shut, kick it open, swings back shut, kick it open, swings back shut. So that's the process here. We can actually look at some of these settings. Uh, the main one here is the threshold is when it turns on. So you set this until you like how it sounds. And then how much reduction? Do we want it to go all the way down or do we want it to have some amount of it still there? And then the release, because uh, the, you don't necessarily, you could have this be really sharp. So for instance, let's do this one down here. So we can have a lot of different actual attack and release effects just by changing the attack, hold, and release. And so we come up with the sound. If we want it to be more abrupt, we can adjust that release even lower. If we want to have a little bit of ending, then we can do that. If we want one of our different sounds, because I have three different patches here that are combining together for that sound. <laughs> So we could actually have them all kind of release at different times to make it sound a little bit more interesting. Uh, on top of that, we also have the same gate settings on our bass sounds. Oh, 
we need to actually change. I was doing a little bit of adjusting right before we started this. And so I think we have, yeah, two different sounds right now, which is okay. Let's just delete that one. Option, click that above. And then just need to adjust my octaves. There we go. One more, there we are. And, okay, so that all aside, just making some small adjustments here. I think I was just gonna do the other one like that. There we go. And, Perfect. Okay. So all of that aside, we're doing the same thing with the gate here. This time though, we have a little bit more of a holdout because, well, it's actually not that much. It's a little bit different attack time. Yeah, the hold is, is more. So the middle section is not a decay. It's just being held out when the gate's open. So it's like you kick the gate open instead of instantly starting to shut at a rate. It just is held open after the 330 milliseconds, then it has a short release time, um, which we could if we wanted to make that all the way down. Cool, so now we have that. So all of these things are being triggered off of that kick in the step sequencer. Uh, the reason why I like to do this instead of one of the other ways, so that you can imagine, most of you are probably thinking of the way that you would do it. One of the reasons why I like to do it this way is because then if I want to change that pattern, I can just do it in one place and it's gonna match the kick. Or for instance, I could give it a little bit of swing. So we could change the feel of it, and then it's going to change the feel across the entire set of bass and synth sounds. Pretty cool. I mean, it's a, it's a really cool way to be able to get that pattern into the instruments. Is this the way that Phineas did it with the 90s? I, you know, I don't know. It could be this way. There's definitely some nuances with his patch that are a little bit more refined. And I think that he's using um, a filter effect on the ends of each of those notes, which we could trigger the same way with this. We could trigger it for each of the notes and have that uh, doing the same thing. But um, I do think that it's a massive sound. Go check out the, the 90s song before the upcoming release. It's a pre-release. Uh, it actually has some really cool auto-tune things in there as well. But this section of the song towards the end, it's, it's massive. It's really cool. And um, I think that it's going to take us doing something like this with a few different instruments in Logic to get that right. And um, I'd like to actually go through and get an exact clone of that at some point. Um, it may be worth, there's one part where it just comes in right at the beginning where we could sample it and just use it. But that's a, a topic for a different day. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at uh, one way to kind of get this rhythmic sound in your synth parts uh, using the step sequencer, a side chain, um, into a gate on each of the things that you want to rhythmically happen and then you tie it all together and I, it's just a, a really cool effect. So thanks for watching. If you like this, let me know and we'll do more of these.